you're watching the 5 Minute Bark Podcast on YouTube. If you like this episode, you just may like many more. Subscribe today by clicking the red subscribe button in the top right hand corner. Okay, everyone, we're here today with my favorite couple in the world, and I'm not even kidding you guys. I follow these guys more on Facebook than most people out there, most couples, and we've got Nicholas and Amanda Barely here today. Did I say it right? You did. <laughs> All right. So these guys are amazing, and they've got their company here today, The True Challenge. Um, they've got a podcast, so we're podcast buddies. Um, we have lots of mutual friends. Um, every single time I'm out and about in social uh, gatherings, business networking, I run into these guys. And it's just really such a pleasure to see both of them smiling, happy. And, and you know what? One of the best things they do is they're giving a lot. So welcome, Nicholas and Amanda, to, to the 5 Minute Bark Podcast. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. having us. Oh, you guys did that in sync. Try it again. One, two, three. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having, having us. Right. This is awesome. <laughs> to do everything. <laughs> so this is my, I think this is only my second um, dual uh, episode where I've had two people on. I had last one was some movie producer and an actor. So it was pretty cool. And um, so cool. Why don't we tell everybody a little bit about in your own words about what you're all about? Because I know you have a couple things going on here today and I know we're going to focus on some of them, but I want to have you kind of give them the, the, the ropes. Yeah, so exactly what we do. Um, we help busy entrepreneurs, people who travel a lot, live a healthier lifestyle. So, you know, if they want to lose weight, get fit, um, we point them in the right direction. We do online coaching, and then we also have a membership site. Uh, and it's, we love it. You know, it's what we do full time. And then we have our podcast called How Bad Do I Want It, which launched in February, and we just uh, hit 50 episodes. So wow. it's going amazing. And um, yeah, that's that's pretty much what we do. And like we said, like you said, Dennis, like, we always run into each other at all of these, you know, events here in San Diego. And um, yeah, we love it. You know, our godfather is gone, has left to Puerto Rico, uh, Kate and um, John Lee. So we have to, they said we have to take over the reins. So I just uh, got a message from them. They said, you know, you guys have to take over the reins. So, you know, that's our duty here in San Diego to take over the reins. So are you ready for that responsibility? Oh, I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take it uh, over. All right. That's great. So, um, all right. So lots of going on and, you know, you're making it sound like it's so simple because I know I have a company and I'm trying to do all the things that I'm doing. And when you just kind of mentioned it, I mean, I know you have a lot more than going on that. This is intense for a couple or anybody, just a single entrepreneur to handle all the things you've got going on here with the podcast. I mean, that's a lot. If you're doing 50 episodes already, I mean, how long has it been? Uh, since February 1st. So you've already got 50 episodes and we all know how hard that is to produce those. Um, and then you got all these challenges going on and webinars and all these different things. I mean, really, the number one question I think my audience would have is how are you doing all this and doing such a good job at it? Yeah, I would say it came down to focus, like figuring out what we were really good at and obviously the process of doing this, being entrepreneurs for over six years together, it, it was a process getting there, but now figuring out what we're good at, it's always easy to do things that you think is fun or that you really jive with. It's always going to be hard doing things that you don't like to do. Me doing what Amanda does it would take me years to accomplish what she does in a month. Mm -hmm. So, and the same for her with what I do. So, uh, kind of aligning yourself with what you are supposed to be doing and just staying focused. Uh, we kind of push things out of our lives that weren't serving our ultimate vision. And I think that was the biggest turning point for us is when we kind of went all in and going all in really changed everything from us. All of a sudden, we started doing things every day that was pushing us closer to our goal subconsciously. And I think that was the biggest change for us was really going all in. We asked ourselves because Amanda was working a job at the time. And I told her, if we don't think that you could quit your job and replace this income with the extra hours that you'd have, then we need to just shut down the business, rethink and restart something else. So I thought it was a great, great question to ask ourselves. Yeah. The question of how bad do I want it? You know, and right. that's what we ask ourselves every single day. Um, you know, if we want something really bad, we're going to do it. And so I think, you know, over the last couple of years, we wanted it really, really bad. And so we put in the work and we're continually putting in the work every single day. But at the same time, 
having fun with it, which is what we're all about. So this, how bad you want it? Does this, does this uh, include like you guys in yoga stance on the floor going at looking at each other going, how bad do you want it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a lot more intense than that. You know, I'm, uh, we're intense people, you know, even though, um, you know, we seem like we're healthy and everything like that. We're really into what we like to do because when it comes down to it, when people are complaining about something that they don't have, that's when they need to ask themselves, how bad do I want it? They either need to move on and quit because they don't want it bad enough or they can go after it even harder. So the question works whether you're quitting or keeping on going. All I know is the quicker you make decisions, the quicker you can move on to the right thing. Well, okay, so before I want to get back to this one thing that you were mentioning before is that you, you pushed the things out of your life that didn't serve you and brought in the ones that did serve you. What are some things you think that don't serve most people out there to get in the way of what you're doing? Mm, good question, that's a good huh? good question. I mean, yeah. we got rid of things like just negativity, I would say like the biggest yeah. thing. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Just like, and even just dwelling on the past, like just thoughts, um, having to get rid of these things. So like thinking about, uh, what if it doesn't work? Thinking about, well, we had success in the past. Will this work? Thinking about, well, I didn't make that sale yesterday. And that holds up a lot of people, you know, headspace. Like you got to get over it. You just got to keep going and going. You got to get rid of those things to go for the great, um, getting rid of fears. Um, I would say those are some of the things just from a mental mindset standpoint of things you had to push out of your life. But um, what Nicholas, I think, was referring to when he said that was pushing things that we aren't, weren't our strengths and either outsourcing it or stopping it completely. And so like for Nicholas and I, um, he does the sales for our company. And he was the one that gets on the phone calls with our clients. He's the one who gets on the sales calls. Um, you know, I do it here and there, but you know, that's just not my strength. And so I had to let, you know, give up control on that and give it to him. Right. Yeah. Not only that, like every single day people are doing things for comfort. And a, a lot of times if you make a decision off of something that's comfortable, and for me being 60 pounds overweight at one point, my comfort was going to food. And so there was different things that I was doing every day to try to feel comfort because building a business is uncomfortable. And so people always want to resort back to, I just want to watch a TV show or I just want to go watch a movie tonight or let's just go out to dinner and do all these things. And I caught myself doing it so often uh, that I was inhibiting myself from doing what I wanted because it wasn't fulfilling. You know, if it was, if you're totally fine with your life and you're going out and doing that, it's totally fine. But for me, I was leaving unfulfilled every time I tried to satisfy myself with something that wasn't going after my purpose. So then I realized that I needed to stop doing those things. And it was actually from asking Gary Vaynerchuk. We were with him in San Diego and I asked him these questions and he just broke it down. He's like, what do you want to do? Cool. Well, then do that and push all these other things that aren't serving that vision out of your life for now because right now they're not helping you get there. So it, it comes down to practically getting your hours back so that you can always be focusing, doing little tiny things to step towards your destiny. You know, I had a guest on who is massively overweight, uh, not long ago, his name is Joyce, uh, excuse me, Jason Goldberg, and he was up in the 300 pound range. And the incident that made him change his life was he got a call from his credit card company because he was trying to buy some socks online and he declined his credit card and he said, well, we think this fraud on your card. We've noticed that your card was used at four different uh, fast food restaurants today. Wow. And it, right there and then he realized that that was me that went to four different restaurants and ate junk food in one day. So that's what changed his life. So for Nicholas, I mean, losing weight and keeping it off, that's the one key thing here. You've kept the weight off. What has done it for you? What is the the situation they said I want this no more yeah I mean to be honest going all the way back to when I was 60 pounds overweight it happened so slowly with gradual little decisions that I actually didn't know that I had gained weight and it sounds like the most embarrassing thing that I could ever say but I just didn't really notice that I was gaining weight over time and so when it happened when I noticed it when the kids were making remarks and people were telling me 
oh, like, what are those things sticking out? Like, they're making fun of my moobs and all these different things, um, like people do, and just getting real. Like, that's what happens. And then you start doing things to hide that. And I was realizing that if it wasn't for that one moment of making a change, a decision to better my health, I would have never went out and built a business. So I, I believe that people are holding back from doing certain things to grow their company or grow their business for themselves because they lack the self-esteem to be able to get there. For me, I saw a kid on a plan who had a diet plan, meal plan. He was a boxer, so he was all set up to weigh in at the right weight. I just copied that. I went after that, and as I started seeing, when I dropped 30 pounds, if you look at me now and looked at me when I lost 30 pounds, I look way better now. I, I would say I looked terrible back then, but just the dropping the weight, doing the right things gave me more confidence to get out and do more and achieve more, make more friends, go out, start sports. And I realized that it was the constant effort working on myself every single day that gave me the confidence to go out there and go judge me. I dare you, judge me because there's, I don't believe there's anything wrong because I've been putting in the effort on this body to make it exactly what I want it to be. And now people could say whatever they'd like to say and I'm so confident in it. And just taking those steps every day made me realize that um, that's what was building the confidence. Wow, you know what? I had to wait this long to get this this kind of this side of you, Nicholas, out. I, you, you're like a boxer on the other side of this microphone here today, <laughs> throwing jabs. A, I'm, I mean, <laughs> where where is this in the public? I want to see this. Do I have to put a micro? I'm, I'm bringing my microphone everywhere we go. That's it. You're gonna. Yes, I'm putting that actually, microphone. Dennis, you should hear. We've been speaking lately at a couple events, and when he gets on stage, he <sighs> says he says stuff. <laughs> That he's like never shared with anyone, and I'm like, like my, my jaw drops. I'm like, did he just say that? That's my because husband. <laughs> he just he just shares things that you know more vulnerable than he would just talking in a conversation, and you're bringing that out. So I love it. Yeah, that, it, no, that's great. I mean, no, really, I I just got chills from hearing this. So I'm 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 fired up. I am totally fired up. And you know, we did talk once for a few moments, and we both share the the liking of golf as well. So. Yeah. Uh, and I know you're very competitive and I think that helps us both too is, is in, in life, it, it is like a, a round of golf is like, there's, there's the, there's the four hours you have to put up with it or do it or get through it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> one of those three, you know, some days you just want to shoot 70 something or whatever, but you know, it's not going to happen. So you're kind of dealing with the rest of the round, um, looking for that pizza after or something like that. But, um, but no, really there's, there's, life is like a, a round of golf. And so I, I, I see that coming out now that you're, we're, we're playing golf right now. You just made a good chip. So. <laughs> hey, thanks so much. And just, just to play off golf real quick, golf made me realize how much you need to have accountability and a mm -hmm. coach. Yeah. You can go play golf one day and play great. The next day go back and you're playing terrible and you feel like you're doing the same exact thing as always. But then your friend looks at you and goes, hey, man, you're doing this different. Like you're overcompensating because one thing happened and you ch you shifted something and they helped get you back on track. But you can't see yourself when you're golfing. So mm. golfing's been a great resource for me to learn how, <laughs> how to get accountability. Amanda, recently you've done several um, video posts on Facebook kind of sharing on, on some pretty heavy, heavy levels. And I know a lot of my audience out there, I know I'm meeting that. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm meeting them at uh, business networking groups and um, they're seeing me and they're seeing people like you and they're going, I can't, you know, I don't, I admire you for going on video on Facebook, doing Facebook live or doing anything. And a lot of people out there just, especially women, a lot of these people, are women I'm talking to, they just don't have the guts or don't have, they feel insecure. They feel like they don't look right and their nose is this way and this and that. Can you help me help these people understand the power in, in the gift that it is to yourself, to yourself mainly, um, which then radiates to everybody else of, of pressing record on that phone? Because I know for me still, it's very hard for me to press record and do it. Um, of course, mm -hmm. I, I'm, a, you know, I'm crazy the most, but you're a woman. Can you share? I mean, because this, this is pretty important stuff. Yeah. So I'll just share a quick story of something that I had to overcome because at the end of the day, most people aren't good at something new that they start, you know, like maybe Tiger Woods was good when he was three years old. That's awesome. Um, but he's a lot better now. So, you know, everything starts from the beginning. And so you're never going to be professional the first time you do it. And no one should put those expectations on you. And I know for me, 
I've struggled with perfectionism for a long time. And so when I first started doing video, I had my first webinar and I actually have never shared this on a podcast before. It happens and a lot, so don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, so I, um, I was going on a webinar, you know, just like this, doing video. And I was so embarrassed because I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't memorize my script. I had, I had a script because I was so nervous that I wrote out almost every single word I was going to say, like literally from like, and, and, but like I put them in this <laughs> script and I went on the webinar and I was like, I can't do it. I can't do on video and read my script. So I'm just going to pretend like the video isn't working and lie to all of my viewers and say, sorry guys, you can't see me. My video is acting up. When in reality, I covered it up because I was so embarrassed to go on she video. She taped a piece of paper over yeah. the video camera. <laughs> so, I mean, you just have to keep doing it. You know, if you have to start off with just doing audio, like that's awesome. Just get used to speaking and then on video, you know, practice that and just keep practicing and practicing and then finally put it on Facebook Live and then you're like, okay, I know it's not gonna be perfect, but at least I've done this before because practice makes perfect. I mean, you know that you are uh, amazing at riding bikes. And so you just have to keep practicing and putting in the work. And I, I still struggle with it. Um, but it's like, it's something you just keep doing and, you know, people are along for the process, you know, just think back five years from now, you're like, oh, wow, like I can see where I started from. So for our listeners out there, you know, just do it. Um, you know, it, it doesn't matter how it looks right now, as long as you keep progressing and don't quit if you, if that's what you want to do. So you said you still struggle with it. I, I'm, I'm not going to leave. We're not going to leave this question, this thing here, this question here yet. So, cause I'm doing some copy right now for what I, you know, I do video podcasts and like that. And so I'm trying to promote that, but what do you still struggle with, with it? I would say trying to be more of myself okay, because good. a lot of, Same you know, here. a lot of people are like, okay, you, even like pictures, it's like, you never pose like that. You never smile like that. But when someone pulls out a picture, that's what you do. So it's like, how do you relay who you really are in video? And so when I get on video, it's like, okay, I'm not trying to perform and act perfect and act like someone that I'm not, I'm just going to be myself. And for me, I'm pretty like, like, as you can see right here, like I'm pretty monotone, I'm pretty like chill and I'm not this hyped up type person like other people on video. So just trying to keep honing in on relaying who I really am in real life on video and making it really real. You know, it's funny because that's exactly what it is, is, is we have to find our own identity, our own authentic self, right? And it's yeah. so stupid that we have it right here. It's in us, within us. And we have to go find it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Listeners, I hope you're understanding this, but here's what I wrote for myself. Okay. Cause I am kind of explaining the story of myself going through. And I said, I look horrible on video. My voice sounds awful. What I am going to talk about, what am I going to talk about? I don't want to be embarrassed. Just like you said, and I'm not good at this. And so many speakers are better than me. Those are the things that I was like saying to myself a hundred times before I press record. Mm -hmm. And it's just so funny. And I just said, you know, I have to make the leap and just go. And I just press record and I say, it's live. You, you know, you got to go with it, but I'm just really trying to help, you know, not only you and myself, but our listeners out there that, that want to utilize these things because you know what, when people like you and, and uh, Nicholas do this, it's a no like, and trust. Um, and I'm sure you're probably getting a lot of feedback, right? And a lot of people interested in your programs because they're seeing the real you. Am I wrong or am I right? No, exactly. Yeah. And people are, you know, we're starting to do more Facebook ads. And so just using that, the power of video even more in all of our Facebook ads. And it's been doing really, really well, um, making us stand out rather than just putting in a picture, you know, right. from like a, a stock photo right. or something. You're actually having us right there so that they trust us and they like us. Yeah. And you know, and I think, uh, and I think I know you are. Uh, we're all part of a movement that's not like uh, this perfect professional look. We have to look perfect, like lighting, everything. We're all kind of out of this real thing. And I think you, you noticed that Sean Stevenson just did a post pretty recently. Uh, he was actually supposed to be recording with me that day that he had to cancel and he put a big, I don't know if you saw the video that he did. I think you guys were liking it. Uh, he did a big video about, you know, we're all coaches. We're all these people. 
but we're not perfect on the other side either, you know? And he was sharing that. And I think, like you said, like I saw in your video, you were sharing like, Hey, I have down days too. I am not perfect. And that even more leads to, um, credibility. And I know I've found it. I, I once posted on Facebook that, Hey, I feel defeated because I did. I've been working so hard for many years, developing my software and developing everything. My podcast is going fine. That's been the easiest part, but I've been really struggling on the, on the other end. And it's like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm doing everything right, but I'm not getting the action I take. And I was, I felt defeated. And all of a sudden I got, you know, a hundred likes and 50 people calling me and texting me and messaging me. Are you okay? You know, how can I help? What can we do? And it's amazing. You know, it's really amazing. So I love how you're building trust. And I know you guys have been working hard and you, you we had mentioned something about a webinar you've got going on. Can you tell us more about this? Cause I didn't get, you know, we don't talk much before we do these, these interviews, everybody, we, they're, they're live. We're, we're not making this show up for you. This is it. This is the real deal. So tell me about this webinar and how people can participate in it. Yeah, some of you guys out there might even get targeted with our Facebook ad that's me uh, talking about it. And the biggest thing is the reason I made and why we're spending money to be able to show you guys what we're doing because we put the webinar on for free. So you guys aren't going to pay anything for it. It was because no one was there for me. You know, I was 60 pounds overweight, great. But nobody was there saying anything positive that, hey, I'm going to give you exactly what I did to lose 60 pounds because there, there was people that lost weight back then just like they lose weight now. <laughs> and on that video, I even got emotional about it. I was like, nobody was there for me. Nobody was there reaching out to me in my Facebook you know, like stream right there because I didn't even have Facebook at the time. No one was there. And so I made it as a service, Amanda and I, a webinar where we teach you how to release fat. We talk about releasing fat because if you lose weight, I you like can always that. find it. Like you can always go find things that you lose, but if you release something, it never comes back to you. So just changing the mindset. Even with the speaking, just going back to what you said, uh, all those things you wrote down, I would advise to cross them out and then put the opposite in there. My message resonates authentically with the people that are supposed to resonate with me. I'm a great speaker because I speak my heart and it'll reach people that other people can't. You know, re, uh, reprogramming your mind uh, with those things. And so we do that on, on our webinars, Release Fat. We want to show you how to boost energy as an entrepreneur and uh, increase confidence. I think that confidence is a key to success. Uh, I'm here right in front of you. And yeah, all the things I've learned about business and confidence and all this stuff has helped and me honing my message and figuring out who I am. But it never, I still would not be in front of you guys if it wasn't for that one moment when that kid brought fruit to school with a, with a meal plan that shifted my health and made me take advantage of my health and go after getting results in that area, I still wouldn't be in front of you, even if I had all the knowledge in the world because I didn't work on myself. So um, that's the biggest thing that we want to show there is teach you guys how to release the fat, boost your energy, and boost confidence so that you can go out there and give everyone 100% every day to the best of your ability. And so that's every Thursday, sometimes every other Thursday, but you can sign up. It's completely free and it's at thetruechallenge.com slash webinar. So thetruechallenge.com slash webinar, I, all I, free for you guys. And I'm sure everyone will love it. I love it. So I love how you guys are really kind of digging deep on, on the, um, I'm going to call it insecurities. So, I mean, there's kind of different things there and mm -hmm. I'm always, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm tr again, I'm trying to find ways into people's heads to help them understand insecurity is just this wall that's up that doesn't exist. And once you break through it, you're going to laugh on the other side because it's like, Oh my God. Um, I mean, you know, it's even, even, even a relationship meeting a person for the first time, your, your hands are palmy, you know, the palmy and you're nervous and you're, you're trying to be perfect and you're trying to think, and all of a sudden you talk to the person and they're comfortable and they're easy to talk to and you had a lot of fun and like you get in your car and you start laughing. Like, why was I so nervous? Yeah. You know, or a big client or that first sale or that, you know, that big deal. Why was I so caught up in the nervousness? And then once the nervousness knows ways, more sales and more people come into our life like crazy and that floods. And we just put up this wall for no reason. And I, I like to kind of look at it as like insecurity is the storm before success, right? Because you got to break through it. And on the other side, it's like, ah, oh, it's sunny, you know? And I mean, I, I love how you guys are really kind of helping people tackle that. And I think we both are, we all are, we're just right, really trying to work on that, but you more toward health and more toward, you know, vibrance. 
know, yeah. it's funny because I have to sit here and I have to look at and I have to adjust myself to two different eye sets here <laughs> on video. It's like I got these moving two. I'm going back. I don't know if you guys have noticed my eyes are going crazy. Like Amanda Nicholas, mm-hmm. Amanda Nicholas, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> so this is awesome. So how many, um, how many, what am, I, what am I saying here? What am I saying? I'm, I'm on the wrong subject. So these, these webinars, um, are, you're basically giving them to the people and they're really going to learn a lot. Um, mm-hmm. what other, now you, some other things you have is your podcast is they kind of work with each other. Or are they different education? Yeah. So with our podcast, it's all about self-help, personal development, um, you know, success and the reason that we kind of did that is because our market and the people that we serve are business owners and people that are interested in those things. And so we kind of have a spin to it of, you know, every person that we have on our podcast asking them, you know, what are some healthy habits do you, that you do? You know, we bring on um, guests that live a healthy lifestyle that are extremely successful. And uh, the reason we kind of found that is about a year and a half ago, I researched so many entrepreneurs and I realized that the most successful ones lived a very healthy lifestyle. Well, most of them, but you know, like Sir Richard Branson and he really struck me when he told me that if you aren't fit and healthy, you can't accomplish anything. And I was like, Whoa, like this is Sir Richard Branson. Like he's a billionaire and he's saying this. And since he continually preaches that, I mean, he, he plays tennis two hours a day He lives an extremely healthy lifestyle. And so with our podcast, we bring on those types of people and ask them what's made you successful. And, um, and we kind of just have that as a free resource for our clients and the people that we're serving, because, you know, that's something that we're super into always growing yourself and learning how to be successful, stay motivated and also live a healthy lifestyle. That's awesome. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm a business owner. I'm starting a company and there's a lot of stress that goes on with, I won't, I won't lie. It's a very intense, um, because you're, you're just working. You're trying to do a 20-hour day, and it's just not physically if, possible. That's a good thing, by the way. If, it, if I heard anything else, I'd be like, this guy isn't going to make it. You're not going right. to do anything. So, right. But one thing I do have learned by seeing my friends that went out and made the millions of dollars who did put the 20 hours a day and that didn't take care of the health, who are now in constant uh, visits to the hospital. I warned them years ago, you're not focusing on your health. And literally, some of those people literally have two to three visits to the doctor because they're stressed out and just they can't work anymore. Literally. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. This is not made up. And I know now that I'm in that position where I am on the go button and I have to give every second I have available, but I know that it can't be a 20 hour day. I can put it in and I did a few months, a few years ago I did do it and it it cost me some uh, damage in my arms because I was on the computer so long and so Mm -hmm. intense. It costs some damage to my arms, but I realized I can't let my health go. I can't, I have to drink my water. I have to eat properly. I have to breathe properly. Yeah. I have to, I have weights on the ground back here that I will jump on occasionally to get some of that energy and exhaustion. Cause you can feel your blood, right? You can feel, I'm sure you guys have been through this. You can feel your blood really boiling within your body and that's leading to disease. That's leading to unhealthy um, abilities. So I know that now and I make sure to just stretch and let, let the, let it all out. Right. And let it, let it go. Yeah. (laughs) Right. And and then, and then eat the the proper things and do the proper things. And, um, just that alone takes a lot of tension off the body. Right. Yeah. So, um, amazing stuff. You guys, I am so excited that I got this chance to, we've been rescheduling and rescheduling because of our, our, our uh, schedules to finally, get to do this podcast has been great. Um, you both have beautiful smiles, you're beautiful people and you're doing great things for a lot of people out there. And, um, I'm one of your biggest fans out there. I try to like as many of your posts as I can. And I hope, uh, great sex success comes to you both. Um, is there anything you guys want to leave this audience with that, um, a shout out or a, um, words of wisdom? I've already, you've already given about a hundred, (laughs) but Yeah, I mean, even going back to what you said about your friends working 20-hour days, getting four hours of sleep, which probably wasn't great sleep because they go to bed all ramped up and ready to go, uh, the biggest thing is that they're losing in the long term. It's like making quick money. You're in like this scheme of, I'm going to go work really hard, and now they're spending all this time trying to recover, and they can't hardly work at all. So it's figuring out what your priorities are. And when I was 18 years old, I had this thought go through my mind with something I was going through, and the thought was that I'd rather do what I what I think is right and fail than do what I already know is wrong and succeed. 
So I already know it's wrong to beat down my body, the only place I have to live, like Jim Rohn says. I already know that's wrong, so I don't go there. Just like I already know stealing from people, I can make money stealing, but I know that's wrong. So I'd rather work really hard to make money the right way and possibly fail rather than doing what I already know is wrong to succeed. So it's figuring out what are the things that like are important to you. And most of the time, if I said, hey, you want to make 100 grand this year? Most people would go, oh my gosh, that's awesome. And then I'd ask them, does it matter if you were to like die or feel terrible? Like if you just lost all your ability to go do things with your body? They're like, no, I don't want it for that. But that's what they're doing. So they're, t- they're telling me that their body and their health is the most important thing, but their actions aren't, aren't like proving that. So it's writing down what your priorities are and then writing down next to that what you're actually doing. And a lot of times you'll see you're caring about other people first, your business first, everything that you're doing, and then lastly, if you can get around to it, your health. But on your actual list, your health is at number one. So you need to make sure that your life matches up to what you believe uh, or else you're just a hypocrite. (laughs) <laughs> but, for, but for real right Boom. like that's just how it goes so if you no. can do that it's practically it's hard to fail if you actually follow the list of what you already want no i know because i mean I, I can easily switch into hypocrite mode because i know that i have to go to the gym three times a week i know i have to breathe i know i have to do this but i'm so busy i gotta do it. i f- i have to regurgitate putting that lit that back on the top of the list and you got and people out there this is reality. You, you're going to keep dropping that down on your list, your health. It's going to, it's just because you're working so hard. You're so focused and you know the money comes from, and you know the, the excitement and everything comes from all of that, but it, you just got to keep bringing it back to the top of the list. I love how you said that. Bring it back to the top of the list. Always. It's going to drop down the list. That's reality. We're not, we're not perfect human beings. We're, 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 we're fighting, we're kicking, we're punching to make success in our lives as entrepreneurs, but you have to keep bringing it back to the top of the list. Yeah. And um, Gary Vaynerchuk, I know we both follow him and he's, we love him. And something that he posted about a couple months ago was that um, he was winning in every single area of his life because he had accountability uh, in his business and his family. You know, he had his, you know, his wife and his kids keeping him accountable. And then he was like, but I'm not seeing success in my health. And that was because he didn't have accountability. He would like, he would actually post on Facebook and be like, guys, I'm going to hit the gym, be healthy. And then he would never do it. So he actually needed someone there to keep him accountable. And and I think that's something that we all need to, you know, take into consideration with our lives. Is, uh, you know, Nicholas said the power of accountability in golf. And, you know, where, wherever you're not having accountability, um, you're kind of setting yourself up for failure. And so you need to have accountability in every single area of your life. So, you know, if you guys want some accountability in your health, Nicholas and I are here for you. Get connected with us on, um, on Facebook. You know, that is... I mean, that's really the key to success in every area. So Dennis, thank you so much for having us on. Oh, you are, you are so faithful with your podcast and you bring out some amazing people and giving us so much value. So thank you. Oh, thank you. So let's, let's clarify where they can find you guys here. Yeah. So the best place for us to be able to communicate is on Facebook. So we have Nicholas Barely and Amanda Barely. We also have a page on there, but we get back to everyone. So if anyone has a question, that's a great resource. The How Bad Do I Want It podcast, that'll lead you to some other things that we do, uh, like our Facebook group where we have tons of high achievers on there. Uh, so those are some of the best places. We also have Instagram, same names, The True Challenge on Instagram. So those are some Snapchat's great- fun. Yeah. Make sure to add us on Snapchat because mm. that's where we're just talking about daily stuff. We're just mm-hmm. you're able to post twenty times on Snapchat, ten second clips. Whereas Instagram, you don't want to overload people, and Facebook, you don't want to overload. But make sure to connect with us on there so that you can see what we're doing, and we'll make sure we answer any questions for you guys. Awesome for those audio listeners. Why don't you spell out your name? I, well, I'll do it for you. That's B A Y E R L E. Yes. Yes. Amanda and Nicholas. Yeah, bear <laughs> aspirin with an L E. Yeah. <laughs> That's just one of our companies. I'm yeah, just there kidding. you go. <laughs> we make money on aspirin, and then yeah. All right, awesome guys. This is again, this is great. Um, I love it. Um, I'm sure I'll see you very soon. And yes. audience, please reach out to these guys. I love how we talked about them here today, and <clears throat> we saw accountability, we saw responsibility, we saw hard work, um, and. It's obviously gives you the grounds to endorse their company and 
to work with them. So I think it's very important that you reach out if you're in the situation where they can help you. Um, I, I'm telling you, they will give you the time of day. They will talk to you. They'll get right back to you as soon as they can. I've seen it over and over and over again. So everyone, thank you for listening to the five minute bark here today. Nicholas and Amanda, thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thank you guys. Ooh, look at that. It's like a gongo drum there. All right. Talk soon, everybody. Talk soon, everybody. Thank you. You're watching the 5 Minute Bark Podcast on YouTube. If you like this episode, you just may like many more. Subscribe today by clicking the red subscribe button in the top right hand corner.